about well, seven, seven years. years. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Awesome. And would you say that you were happily married? Yes. <laughs> okay, everyone answered yes. And why would you say that? Look at her. <laughs> she's still smiling. You know, yeah. if, if my wife is not smiling, I'm not happy. If she's smiling, I'm happy. And, you know, it's been a journey. I've learned way more mm -hmm. being married than I would have. You never know how selfish you are until you're married. Mm -hmm. um, you, you really don't. You think you're a nice person. You do things for your friends. Hmm. When you're married, you, you share the same space. That's she likes the covers on, mm -hmm. I like the covers off. She likes it hot, I like it cold. You know, we're different, but we're, we're similar only because Christ is the center of the relationship. Mm -hmm. And the closer we both come to Christ, the greater the love is for each other. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is, you never know how bad you can hurt until you're married either. Mm -hmm. Because when you're married, you've, you've put out, you've given all in that relationship. Mm -hmm. And when it's not necessarily requited right away, you know, or um, when you're not completely learning each other, because in the courtship, that was a quick courtship, you know, mm -hmm. for most, but you don't know each other perfectly in mm -hmm. that time frame. And even now, after six years, we just had a conversation last night, so you don't like that. Oh, okay, I, I, won't, I won't do that again. Let's let's make adjustments, you know, mm -hmm. and it's a constant process. Constant process. It's a process. Adjustments. And I, I, I enjoy the process. Sometimes when I find myself being selfish, it's a painful process. Mm -hmm. Because once you put yourself out, or they put themselves out, and it's not given back to you the way you expect it, mm -hmm. it can be painful. Wow. And so then you learn, okay, I don't want to live that way. I don't want to be selfish. Lord, help me to be more like you. And the more you give of yourself, the more you're sacrificing, mm -hmm. there's a love that is experienced that you cannot put words on. It grows. Mm -hmm. They say after five years, your honeymoon's over. Our honeymoon's just, it's just starting. <laughs> you know, the, the love for each other is just really beginning to, to grow and, and mature. And I'm quite sure yeah, where, the, where the love is coming. You know? awesome. So there, there, there has been challenges. Absolutely. But you know, by God, just working together and keeping Christ at the center of the relationship sure. has been the solution for these problems. And it's the only solution. Yes, the only solution. Now, you know, one of our viewers wanted to ask this question because, you know, I believe you are African American and she is half Jamaican and half Belizean. Belizean. Now, were there any cultural differences? Any cultural barriers? No, girl. Everything was perfect. You <laughs> <laughs> Jamaica! <laughs> No, but uh, I'm not, I just mess up all sorts of dialects and everything. I don't know what I'm doing. But uh, no, I, again, in a relationship, mm -hmm. it's the little attentions that make the home happy. Mm -hmm. And because I know she looks, she's Belizean and mm -hmm. she has Jamaican, I know that she likes certain foods. Mm -hmm. I know she likes things a certain way. And I've, I've studied, endeavored to understand what she likes. Mm. And so by You've studied and to, you, to understand you, what you like. You have to study. You, wow. you have to study your mate. You can't just be like, okay, we're married now, keep it moving. Mm -hmm. She studies me. She knows what I like. Mm -hmm. She knows the different foods and the different so if, I think that's just so important. Yeah. You know, I, I don't often hear people say that you study your mate to realize, you know, how can I make this person happy? Mm -hmm. That that is so important. I think it will make a great difference. It, it's in a huge difference. And it, The inverse is most often done. Mm -hmm. What can you do for me? Mm -hmm. You're not doing this for me. Mm -hmm. uh, and when that is the mindset in the relationship, the, the relationship is doomed. It's over. Uh, wow. but, but if the relationship is such that, how can I make her happy? How can I um, lift up Christ in this relationship? How can I help my wife towards heaven? That's mm -hmm. my goal as being a priest in the house. How can I help her get to heaven? How can I make her smile? I work on that, you know. Just like I studied chemistry or biology mm -hmm. or the Bible, I study her. Wow. And now, now, now that you, you mentioned, you said, you know, how can I help her, you know, to make it to heaven? Mm -hmm. Now, how do you do that on a practical level, on a, on a day-to-day -day basis? How do you help each other? This is interesting. Mm -hmm. This is interesting. Um, 
Well, do you want to start, baby? I'll start. So anyway, <laughs> but one of the things that we did first and foremost, we agreed to read Adventist Home. Mm. So when we agreed to read Adventist Home and go over the principles of the relationship, then we had come to some agreements as we read, morning and evening devotion. Okay. Um, let's not compromise on that. Uh, let's have it at the same time every day. Mm -hmm. um, before we have family worship, let's have personal worship, mm -hmm. where you alone with God ourselves individually and bringing that spirit into the family worship. Mm -hmm. um, agreements on how to raise the child. It is a process where me being the priest, me being the head of quote unquote head of the house does not make me the dictator in the home. Mm -hmm. So come now, let us reason together, said the Lord. And so my job is to say, babe, what do you think about this? How do you think we can implement this principle? Mm -hmm. And she's actually she's a straight shooter. So if it's right, it's right. If it's wrong, it's wrong. And she's gonna call it like it is. And so she's easy to talk to about these different things. When force is is used mm -hmm. to get something done spiritually, is actually a work of the devil. Mm -hmm. I can't force my wife to have devotion, mm -hmm. and I can't force her to be Christian, I can't force her, but I can love her. And the Bible says that the, as Christ died for the church, mm -hmm. that's my job. I'm to, die, I'm to die. The Bible talks about the husband washing. Or the, uh, Christ washing the church, mm -hmm. asked the Lord one day, I said, Lord, how do you wash? How do you wash your bride? Mm -hmm. Because um, there is the reality that by being around someone for so long, you can see things in them that they, that you as a friend would not see that I get to see mm -hmm. as a husband. How do I protect that? How do I keep that? How do I help her if she sees it in me? How does she help me? Mm -hmm. I have to die. Only blood washes away sin. Mm -hmm. So only self-sacrifice is going to wash away something that I think mm -hmm. is something that is supposedly wrong with her. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes it's a problem with me. Mm -hmm. I'm the stubborn, hard-headed, knuckle-headed in a relationship. Yeah, often we point the finger at the other individual. It's their problem, but the problem, we have to start looking here. I may be the problem. Right? We found that a lot of couples, they, do they know that the marriage is sacred and there is to be a, a holy mm -hmm. circle around the couples? They, they have often given into talking, talking, not talking bad per se, but talking about the defect of their spouse with other people. Mm -hmm. And we know from councils in the Spirit of Prophecy, at Venice Home for instance, that the circle should not be violated and no one should be um, allowed into that circle. How have you guarded yourself from talking to other people about each other? Like, you know, calling a friend, you know, Alpha, this is what she did. Da -da 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 -da, this girl, I don't know what to do. And yourself doing the same. How have you guarded yourself from that? From we actually agreed in the beginning of our marriage to have uh, like spiritual people that we would talk to. If we cannot agree mm -hmm. on something, that we would talk to specific people to mm. know about what's going on. How we, to solve the problem? To if we can't, if we cannot do it, agree. If mm -hmm. we cannot do it with each other, that we would do it with specific people. But we've never had to do that. And that's like the Lord. Lord, last option because mm -hmm. um, again you want to protect you want to protect this circle mm -hmm. um, I should feel safe here mm -hmm. uh, I shouldn't think oh she's calling her best friend her best friend to look, tell looking at me cross-eyed mm -hmm. and I don't even know why her best friend looking at me cross-eyed you know um, so protect the circle it's between me and her mm -hmm. that's it talk about negative things with people outside of our circle mm -hmm. because here is where that love is the sanctuary is a covering mm -hmm. and the marriage is like the sanctuary mm -hmm. it's a place of safety it's a place of a, a haven that should be kept in that, in that circle amen amen protecting each other because we're one mm -hmm. it's like if you're talking bad about your spouse or someone else ultimately you're talking bad about yourself if sure. you're supposed to be one yeah. and you're making the marriage you a little, some you making a breach, you mm -hmm. weakening the marriage, That's right. introducing someone else. Very good. And you're gonna end up being with them. I mean, you're still with your husband anyway. So mm -hmm. next thing, now you've made someone else mad. Mm -hmm. 
and your spouse. your spouse. And you're together, and then if they bring someone, oh yeah, that's why he did this or whatever, mm -hmm. then you're like, are you talking about my husband? But the thing is, you went out and you just said something, so now... Mm -hmm. yeah. Creating more problems. And that, and that includes mommies and daddies, too. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you're not calling mama, I'm not calling daddy, what's happening right here? It's between you and me, because you don't want your mom... Yeah, I don't want her mom looking at me crazy. <laughs> I would never, I would never tell my mom like, "Oh, Andre, he did this today or something." I would not, yeah. not tell my mom. And that again, this came about because we read having his home, mm -hmm. and we followed those principles. We set them from the beginning. It's sometimes difficult to, to implement the, the principles after. Mm -hmm. They should still be done, mm -hmm. but from the beginning, we read and said, "Okay, this is how we're going to do it," and we agreed. Mentioned in the beginning that you are a stay-at-home mom. Yes. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And we know that today our society doesn't see a stay-at-home mom in a good light. Mm -hmm. They think, you know, oh, slavery. Your husband is dominating you, and you're stuck home, and you have no independence. You have no money. What? <laughs> how do you feel about being a house, you know, stay-at-home mom? Was that your choice? And what is your experience as a stay-at-home mom? Well, from the time that um, she was born, I don't think that there is another choice because whoever your child is with, that's who they're going to be like. So I couldn't see myself letting my child go to a babysitter and I'm not sure about their spirituality, where they're going to be, how they're going to be taught, the influences that could come around them. Um, to me, that's dangerous ground. for me to be at home and raise my own daughter. I have one-on-one -on -one time with her. I know she's getting the care and love that she needs. Um, my husband also helps me with her. She's five years old right now. And um, we come, we share with the homeschooling mm -hmm. together. Um, it's the best training. She has that one-on-one. -on -one. She's the mm -hmm. only child, so she has that one-on-one -on -one training. So I think that... Indeed, it's, I think it's the best way to go, even in the Bible. You know, the mothers were the one who instructed the children. Um, because you, as you said, leaving that work to someone else to do, it's, it's taking a big, big risk. big risk. What is that person going to instruct my child? Now, as far as money and, yes. you know, not having, a, not having a job, not having a title per se, not being promoted, how do you feel about all these things? Well, I've being dependent of your husband, as some of, you know, other people might think. How do you feel about that? Well, I'm actually dependent on God, firstly, because He's the one that's going to provide all of our needs. Mm -hmm. And so, um, my husband is the provider, um, as far as a, a position somewhere. I have the highest position, which is to take care of my daughter at mm -hmm. home. And so, with that, um, it's a joy to be able to be with her every day. If When I go away for a day, and if I just hear her voice on the phone of Daddy's watching her one time, and she's like, Mommy, I'm like, oh, I start feeling sick. I'm like, oh, no, I need to go home with my baby. I know that she's in good hands. <laughs> the thing is, it's, it's just because of the time, the bond that's there. It's also... Um, better that you could talk to them. They're with you all the time. They're used to you. It's not just having that freedom to be able to, like the child's mind that I go here, I go there, I go everywhere. I'm comfortable anywhere that I go. They have a stability. They have, you know, a foundation of where they are and where they need to be. What's foreign and what is right. You know, mm. so. Yeah, man, you get that connection. A lot of parents today, because not that it's there's, there's not that it's wrong to work, but they're so um, overwhelmed with work that they don't have any time for their children. They barely know who their children are, right. and the Vice child person. grew up and they become strangers. Yeah. And how are you gonna influence that child, you know, heavenward? How are you gonna be a counselor and a friend to them when you're never present? So I think it's it's a wonderful thing that you're able to be present um, for your daughter. Yes, money's not worth that. Money's not worth that, and you are happy being a housewife. Yes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Any words on that, Andre? No, I, well, I just in the same vein of staying home with the child, 
um, children are being molested at a very cool. high rate. Mm. Um, and there is, even when you send children to have overnight stays at a friend's house, or they learn things that you would never personally teach your child. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we actually made a commitment, again, yeah. from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. No overnights, she ain't going nowhere. I mean, of course, we're not going to be overprotective, but mm -hmm. there's no sleeping over someone else's house. And there's no staying with someone until she's seven years old at least, mm -hmm. where she can clearly, discernibly tell us what is going on. Mm -hmm. And when they're little, they can be intimidated mm -hmm. and different things like that. We have no desire to put her in those situations. So we've come to an agreement, hey, you know, the little one's with us. If she's not with you, she's with me. If, she, if you're going to do a job somewhere, she's going to go with you. If, 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 if you're not available, I'm there. We are her guardians. And they have these tall, crazy guys standing on sticks, mm -hmm. dancing. And I just felt, in that moment, I felt like a guardian angel to my child. Mm -hmm. My wife was standing on one side, I'm standing on the other, and there's the anointed chair right there in the middle, my little girl. <laughs> you know, and I'm just, I just want to protect her as much as I can. Mm -hmm. from the evils that are in this world because they are rampant and people are causing all sorts of problems, you know, mm -hmm. so just, just to add to that, that's why she's the best mommy that can be. Yeah. And you're happy. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, that's one of the things I wanted our viewers to know that it is possible because you stay at home doesn't mean that you're miserable and yeah. Oh, sorry. You I, didn't, something? I do. I didn't want to interrupt oh, you. Okay. But um, I do do some little housework every now and then, mm -hmm. and I take her with me, and that's also to show her how to work. Mm -hmm. If you want something, this is what you have to do. So she goes. She's my little helper, and she knows what work is. Okay. Awesome. Now there's a statement, Andre. It says, "The king from Adventist Home," page two thirty one. The king upon his throne has no higher work. Then has the mother. Did you hear that, Alpha? The, yes. the king himself, his work is not more important than that of the mother. That's serious. Mm -hmm. And it says that the mother is queen of her household. Come on now. Now, how do you make your wife feel like she's the queen of the household? Your queen. Well, let me just say this right now. I'm still learning how to do that. It's a process. Mm -hmm. But I know my life, my wife loves. Yes, she's a giving person, and that's how she shows her affection. She will buy or give gifts and things as, as a means of, so my wife, my wife likes food. She likes to be taken care of. She likes money, so I have to make sure. <laughs> she does. I got to make sure that she has some money, you know, or she don't let me know about it. You know, it's, if I'm going to be the man of the house, then a man needs to bring in the, the funds. So I make sure that she, she has funds and things to take care of. And then more than that, treat her with kindness. Mm -hmm. You know, a man that doesn't treat his wife kindly is not a man at all, at least in my opinion. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't lord over her my kingship, you know. Um, the king is a servant. Mm -hmm. And I try my best to be a servant to her and to treat her kindly and, and get her the things that she needs. You know. Almost seven years and he still opens doors. Praise the Lord, oh, how yes. sweet that is. <laughs> yeah, <he> opened doors. <laughs> <laughs> that. Now, you mentioned that you know being the man and the provider. Yeah. You know, the Bible, from the Bible we know that the man um, has the role of Christ in the marriage relationship. Sure. And Christ is the high priest. And what does it mean to you to be the priest of your home? That's a very that's a very good question now. My job as priest of the home is to present my family before God. Mm -hmm. And it's my job to protect, uh, it's my job to point out when we're not going in the right direction, mm -hmm. it's my job to encourage, mm -hmm. it's my job to plan, you know, in regards to the soul relationship mm -hmm. and the community of the family, the bond. Mm -hmm. you know. The, Another name for hus husband is house band. Mm -hmm. I am to keep it together. In the sanctuary, the priest is the one, the liaison, liaison if you will, between the church and God. Mm -hmm. And that's my job, you know. And I, I oftentimes I've woken up in the middle of the night and prayed over my family. You know, I've gone over and prayed over my little girl, you know, just 
because I, I can't leave them by myself. I mm -hmm. need help. I need angels to help, mm -hmm. you know. If you look at the work of the, the, the high priest, he's to offer gift and sacrifices. Mm -hmm. Hebrews chapter 5. So my job is to provide gifts and it's to make sacrifice. And whatever is necessary for this woman to be happy, to make it to the kingdom, for her to find her path there, mm -hmm. um, I'm going to make sure she gets it. <laughs> you know, you, you, you mentioned that you, you pray for your, for your daughter and for your family. And in our society, at least what I've noticed, nor usually in the families, the, the wives usually are the praying ones. Mm -hmm. The husband's somewhat slack when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. So it's a blessing that you realize that it is also your responsibility. Yeah, it's my responsibility, but I'll tell you what. When my wife prays, she prays. Uh, I often, one time I woke up in the morning, she was already praying, and she stayed on her knees. I don't pray as long as she does. Mm -hmm. uh, she prays, and I very much appreciate that about her. I don't even think I've ever said that to you, but uh, I really appreciate the fact that when she prays, she really does pray, and she stays on her knees. I'm thinking, what is she praying about? It don't take me that long. You know, I go to my list, you know, things would but, but she's really there praying and agonizing with God and I, I definitely appreciate that about her. Yeah, Alpha. Um, you know how we know from the Bible that Eve was taken from Adam's rib mm. to be her to be his equal and to support him. Mm -hmm. And how in, in our society as we were talking about, you know, being a housewife, there's this woman power, this competition between men and, and women. How do you how, how have you been able to be a helpmate to Andre? You know, being his equal, being his helper, and allowing him to be the leader, allowing him to be the priest. In what practical ways have you done that? To make, to make him know that, okay, honey, I trust you as my leader. You are, you know, I'm following you. I go where he goes. <laughs> okay. You go where he goes. I go where he goes. Um. I have seen mm -hmm. many different, many years of different things that he'll say, mm -hmm. and I'm like, okay, some things seem like far-fetched. Mm -hmm. Some things have seemed far-fetched, and I'm just looking, and I'm like, okay, he's one, he's wanting to do the work for God. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, and we go and we do it, and God has just proven that this thing. I mean, the Holy Spirit's working in him, mm -hmm. you know, so I'm just like, okay, this is something that he said, but he didn't just get it out the air. Mm -hmm. This is something, and I'm, we pray about it, and for the most part, I mean, we're here now, mm -hmm. and um, our ministry is growing, and um, I just, I trust in God, and as I see him follow Christ, I follow my husband. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. So if there was to be a disagreement in doing something... What would happen? You know, it would be a long talk. It would be a long talk. <laughs> and ultimately, you know, we know that the husband's word prevail if we can get, it, is that? It does, but mm -hmm. I'll just say this. We have long talks. Mm -hmm. In other words, I'm not really going to make a decision mm -hmm. if she's against it per se. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, the husband's responsible. Mm -hmm. When I stand before God, I'm going to be the one and God's going to say, so why do you hold it down? I want to be like, well, it was Eve who gave me. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to say, Lord, by God's grace, I've done what you asked me to do. And if we've come to a point where I have to make that decision and we're going to go ahead and do what we got to do, God often, more, more often than not, he has proven that the decision that was made was the right one. Now, if I've made a mistake, mm -hmm. I have to admit, admit mm -hmm. quickly to her. To her. Mm -hmm. That I made that mistake and it needs to be plain. I this is I should have listened to you, babe. Mm -hmm. You know, but we by God's grace the Holy Spirit leads and the Lord's leading. I am taking the glory to myself, the Lord leads. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Praise I told my wife and again, I have many conversations. I talk to her plainly and openly because I think communication, good communication is very, very important. And one of the things I told her before we got married, I said, sweetie. If I were to ever cheat, hmm. it would never be because of anything that you did. It would be because I wanted to do it myself. Hmm. You know, some men say, well, my wife talked to me this way, so then I'm going to go ahead and cheat. Hmm. Or she didn't cook the food this way, so I'm going to go ahead and cheat. Or 
this girl is nicer than me at the job than my wife is, so I'm going to go ahead and cheat. It has nothing to do with the wife. Mm -hmm. It has everything to do with selfishness and sin. Mm -hmm. So, my wife said one time we were driving the car, she says, uh, <laughs> she says, uh, she says, uh, um, I say, sweetie, I say, you, I say, I, I love you. She says, why? And I tell her, because I choose to. Mm. You know, some guys will say, um, I love you. Why? Because your eyes are beautiful. Because your skin is smooth. What happens when her, when her skin don't smooth no more? <laughs> what happens when she wrinkle up? Mm. Love is not a superficial attachment. Mm -hmm. Love is a choice. Mm -hmm. So I love you because I choose to. And I choose to love you despite what I perceive at times, if it were something negative. Mm -hmm. And she chooses to love me despite love covers. Mm -hmm. Love, a multitude of sin. And so that's why the Bible says, uh, Adam and Eve were naked, but they were not they ashamed. Were not ashamed. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I mean, I know this is video, I don't know who's watching, but I remember the first time we were naked. And it was a little uncomfortable. <laughs> you know? But once you're around each other and you love each other, she can be in the bathroom naked, I'm in the bathroom naked, no problem. <laughs> not ashamed. We're used to the warts on each other. We're used to the different things on each other. And we choose to love despite the imperfections that we know are there. Mm -hmm. Our eyes are not on each other's imperfections. Our eyes are on the man Jesus. And as our eyes are on the man Jesus, we become more lovely, more beautiful um, to each other. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a beautiful thing. We've told our story, but we've, we've sought to live by the principles that God set forth, which makes homes happy make them last and it's not always the euphoric feeling mm -hmm. you know somebody says well you're you're not you're not close enough you're not kissing all the time in the video you know, <laughs> that's nothing to do with anything that the it's the foundations of the home that are found in christ that it lives bring happiness to that home it is so important it's serious it's a serious matter and i i there's a quotation that says not one in a hundred already to be married not one in a hundred not one in 100. Not one in 100. Mercy. And think about this. Satan hates happy homes. Mm -hmm. Just look at the percentage of divorce in our country. Look at those who are not divorced, but are in the home together, but don't Miserable. like each other. Miserable. Don't sleep in the same bed together. Uh, why? What, what's mm -hmm. happening? Satan has played a game mm -hmm. on the relationship. He's mm -hmm. played a game on the home. So the home, the, that sacred circle must be protected. It is from the home that our societies are made. So you just ask yourself the question, look at our society. It's messed up. It's messed up. And if our society is messed up, that means our homes are messed up. And if our homes are messed up, it's the heads of the family that are messed up. Mm -hmm. So it comes back to me, it comes back to her, and it comes back to the community in that church. The churches are messed up. Why are the churches messed up? Because the families are messed up. If we want a revolution, we want happiness in our homes, in our community, in our churches, the greatest reformation that can be had Outside of your own personal heart reformation, it's a reformation in the home. Mm. Well, there are principles. Mm -hmm. And when you follow those principles, you make a decision. And when you make that decision, you make it with God in mind. Mm -hmm. And you go for it in faith. And the divorce word is never to be brought up once you've entered into the union. Don't mm -hmm. ever bring it up for any reason under any circumstance, whether in play or in jest or anything. And don't play like that. Don't even hint at it. Don't even, and when you're in a relationship, don't, and when you're in a relationship, do not negatively talk about your spouse mm -hmm. to others or in jest with each other, call each other negative names, like mm -hmm. you're fat, or you're silly, mm -hmm. or you're, these things destroy love. Mm -hmm. And I want to say something to that. Mm -hmm. um, a few years ago, someone came to me mm -hmm. as, a, as a young minister, and they said, Brother Andre, do you think God wants me to stay with someone mm -hmm. that I do not love? Mm -hmm. Well, what do you say to that? How do you answer that? Mm -hmm. The simple answer I had was, where does love come from? Where does, God comes from God. So if you don't have love in your relationship, then the answer is not necessarily separation as it is, let's go to the source. 
and the source can give you love for the unlovable. Mm. And the source can recreate a bond that has been broken. Mm. God can do it. I've seen him work miracles. Amen. And there's hope for every relationship if they turn back to Jesus. Amen. So start out the right way. That's right. You know, have a relationship with God. Know God personally. If you want love, sweetie pie, girlfriend, that's my bride, that's my girl, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we use them words. And women do love words. Yeah, you use them. They words. do, right, Alpha? <laughs> and when you when they make a meal and it doesn't taste the way you think it should taste, sweetie, I love you. Thank you for the time that you put in to making that meal. And don't address the nastiness of the meal. If you think it's nasty right then, don't address it right then. Come back there and say, sweetie. I appreciate that, but um, I didn't like it so much. Maybe not that one again. Maybe not that one again. <laughs> but don't be like, I can't stand this. And you always, you had all day to do this, and you couldn't come out with nothing better than that. Mercy. Um, you're talking about killing a relationship. Mm -hmm. Always speak with tenderness mm -hmm. and tender regard for the one that you love. Amen. Love is a plant of heavenly growth. That's right. And it has to be nurtured. 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 Thank you so much for sharing your story with us. And I do pray that the Lord will continue to be with you in your relationship, that He will draw you closer to Him and closer to one another, and that your love for each other will be a reflection of the perfect love that God has for His church.